It has been a rather crazy, painful week, hasn't it? Um, I, I just want to say a word about this before I get into uh, the message. That I don't know how much of the thing, the interview, or was it a job interview, or was it an interrogation, or what, what do you call this thing? But I don't know how much of that you watched, but... Um, it seems to me that it's, it's kind of a microcosm into what is, I think, a sickness that is festering at the heart of America. You know, as, as you look upon the different parties as they're asking questions and arguing back and forth, it was really clear at some points that these folks, at least most of them, it seems that they loathe each other. They don't just agree, disagree, but there's an animosity there. Sometimes it was tangible, palpable. It was just... and and. You can almost see why, given once you get you know, all the tit for tat that's going on, and you did this to us, or we're going to do this back to you, or you hide here, we're not going to invite you, but then you, know, you won't participate. And all this, it's like, you can see why they loathe each other, because they're kind of lo- loathsome. I mean, the, the whole thing, the whole thing, it, it really was, it really was um, it, something. And, it's, and I think that that's what we have going on in our culture, is uh, people increasingly getting farther and farther apart ideologically and, and suspe- suspecting each other and then, and then accusing each other and there's no cooperation and there's just hostility. Um, I'm so glad I know Jesus. <laughs> and my hope's in Jesus Christ because right now it's... But there's... there's and, and it's the kind of thing where because it's in this toxic atmosphere, everything you say, people are like, will try to overinterpret it, you know? And so... And there's always a million angles at things. But I really want to take one angle on this. It's only one angle on this. But it's a big one, and I want to address it. And I want us to pray for this. And that's this, that I'm aware that this week, while it was rough for everybody, I think, um, for women who are survivors of sexual assault, I think this, was, this could be a profoundly difficult week. Uh, in fact, I know from social media and other venues that... Um, as many women, as they listened to Ms. Ford testify, it was their story. It was their story. And multitudes of women have, you know, have kept this quiet for decades and decades. Sometimes they never tell anybody because there's such shame surrounding this. And, or they just don't think anything will happen of it. And, and, and so, so this has stirred up a lot of, of raw emotions for survivors of sexual assault. And the stats on this are absolutely breathtaking. It's like there's an there's a elephant in the room, an epidemic. And we're starting to hear about it now, thanks to the Me Too movement and, and uh, that thread, why I didn't go public uh, or why I didn't tell my story. There's thousands of, of, of people getting on there now telling their story and why they didn't tell their story. And um, I, I think we should stop and pray for, for that segment of the population. Uh, one out of three women, they say, are sexually assaulted. One out of women. And the real, 80% of sexual assaults don't ever get reported. Um, there's just so many things around it. And maybe that's going to be changing now. But, but it, it's a secret. Um, in fact, out of, for every thousand rapes, and rapes isn't just about intercourse, by the way. It's legally... Uh, that's, I'll say enough of that. But, but, but for every thousand, there are six rapists who get convicted. For every thousand rapes, six. That's it. Um, it's, it's, it's deplorable. And so uh, women often feel they, they, they're not going to be heard. They're not going to be taken seriously. Maybe it's even going to be used against them. What were you wearing? What were, you know, had you drank? And, and all these things. And so it's a, it's a painful secret that many women keep. And we should just pray. Father, uh, there is... Uh, reigning chaos and animosity all over the place right now. And as people uh, who are called to work for the good of the city, we pray for our land and that you'd heal the divisions of this land because we don't see a way forward on our own. Uh, And Lord, right now we want to intercede and use the authority that you've given us as kingdom people to use that on behalf of women who have been victimized, who have been assaulted. Um, and maybe you have been carrying this dark, painful secret for a long time. And perhaps it's influenced their life, the quality of their life, in, in ways that maybe they don't even know. 
And folks, as I'm praying here, if you know a particular survivor, pray for that particular survivor. Apply, or maybe it applies to you. Apply it to yourself. Father, we ask that you, by the power of your spirit, heal women who have had this terrible experience. Uh, Lord, bring comfort to them as they're perhaps experiencing raw pain right now, as this has activated so much stuff in their own memory. And I pray, Lord, that, that you, you surround them with people that they can begin to tell their story to and receive healing for that. And for all the survivors in this auditorium or who are listening through podcasts, we pray for them, Lord, that you touch them and heal them and restore them and, and, and eradicate from their brain any message that, that abuse has given them about themselves. Uh, we come against every lie that, that they might have believed as a result of this and ask that you comfort them and heal them. And Lord, we also stand in the gap on behalf of, of uh, the men, usually, who have perpetrated this uh, abuse. We pray, Lord, that, that if they haven't yet woken up to the uh, wounds and lies, choices that they've made that brought them to this point, that they would do so and turn from it, Lord. And we pray, God, for healing for them and restoration for them. We're thankful, God, that there is no sin that puts us outside of your love. And, and, and so, we, God, we pray that you'd love them into wholeness. Whatever views need to change in their mind about women, however those lies got there, we come against that in Jesus' name.